Right then, the player power rankings continue with the second row. And this video goes to demonstrate, and the next video too, go to demonstrate that I listen to the comments in the channel. So always get stuck in down below, tell me what you think. Because one of the comments I've had through the front row videos with people anticipating that I would get to the second row, and one of the comments was Tim. You've got to do 20 locks. You can't just have 10 when there are two locks in a team. And that is fair comment. So I have tried to separate, because I don't want to do a, a, a big long list of 20. I want to keep it to top 10s. So I've tried to separate all of the second rows in World Rugby into tight headlocks, the more number four enforcer uh, type that will just go and smash rucks and smash people all day, and the typical number five loose headlock who will be more of the line-out forward, athletic runner. Obviously, some tight head locks can do the other job and vice versa. So I've just tried to split them up as best I can. But I think as a result, this will mean there are some interesting conversations to be had in the comments because you may well disagree with my assessment here. And I love it. Tell me what you think. Get stuck in. Give the video a thumbs up to spread the channel and subscribe if you haven't already. I would love it to, if I could get your subscription as well. That that'd, um if I do enough to uh, justify your subscription, if you get value from the channel, then consider subscribing today. Uh, so on with the top 10 then for tight head locks. And I'm going to start with a man who wasn't involved in the Rugby World Cup. And Paul Villemza has dropped down quite a few spots in this list from the last time I did it, basically because we haven't seen him. But I couldn't really justify him dropping completely out of the top 10 because he is an outstanding player. I hope he is back and fit soon. He's a massive man. South African born, but been playing for France since 2019, 31 years of age and 130 kegs. That is a man that France massively missed during the World Cup. Um, so I've kept him in the number 10 just. Uh, to number nine then, and a new entry into the top 10, Will Rowlands, who had a fantastic World Cup, an absolute tackling machine. Bear in mind they were without Alan Wynne-Jones, who's been a talisman for the team. Will Rowlands did a lot of the work that Alan Wynne-Jones would have done. He um, he switched allegiances. He's got a, a Welsh-born father, so born and raised in England, but been playing for Wales for three years now, and he has got better and better and better. And you can see that by the fact that Racing 92 have uh, opened up the checkbook to grab him um, from Wales, and he's now playing his rugby in France. 32 years of age, uh, he's a massive part of that Welsh pack, and he was brilliant at the World Cup. Will Rowlands is number nine. At number eight in the tight headlock position, Ollie Chesham, one of the one of the breakthrough stars in world rugby. He made his debut last year, and he has been brilliant. He almost missed the Rugby World Cup because of an injury, and it, um, it meant a lot for him to be able to be back and playing. He, he got quite emotional at, at, at points. Just, I, I think he was was it in the was it in the opening game against Argentina when he was in tears during the national anthem, and I think it was then that he suddenly dawned on him, I'm at the World Cup, I made it. And all the sacrifice and all the rehabilitation he put in was well worth it. He is going to be a big part of England's pack going forward and a very young man at 23. And, he, well, what's exciting for England fans is that he's the oldest of uh, four and uh, his two younger brothers are pretty handy at rugby as well. Uh, some people at Leicester Tigers, where he plays, suggest that the youngsters might be even better. So it's like... Um, a giant rugby playing Weasley family that, <laughs> from Harry Potter that England have got there. Uh, Ollie Chesham at number eight. And number seven, Ian Henderson. 31 years of age, two-time British and Irish Lions tourist, two Grand Slams with the Ireland squad. He's got eight, just about 80 caps to his name. And he's he's done all that, but he's never been the main man in the second row for Ireland. He's always kind of been there or thereabouts, but quite often second fiddle to someone else. And well, one that shows the depth that Ireland have built in this position. Uh, but the fact that he's year after year just been doing it and bringing it, he is such a tough, tough player. He is one of those guys, he can play in the back row. He's one of those guys that could tick the, the loose head lock position. He's, um, he's an absolute gem that Ireland have got in their squad. And he has captained Ireland, captains his province at Ulster. Love Hendo. Uh, at number six, Richie Gray, another player that you could put in the loose headlock category because he's a rangy runner, big line out forward. But this guy is a, is a giant, six foot ten, 130 kegs near enough, 34 years of age now. But the last couple of years, 
He has been rejuvenated and playing some of his best rugby in the last year or two. A disappointing World Cup for Scotland, but Richie Gray has been one of the bright spots for Scottish rugby in recent times. Into the number five then, uh, and James Ryan, 27 years of age. He is starting to realise the potential that he showed when he burst on the scene as a young man. He had a bit of an injury uh, at, the, at, at the World Cup. Uh, he wasn't totally trusted and he wasn't selected at times. Um, the line-out malfunctioned a little bit, but I, I'm, I'm not just judging this on the Rugby World Cup. Obviously, that comes into it with my selections. But James Ryan, last season overall, was absolutely exceptional. I went to Dublin quite a lot of times working on games and I saw a lot of James Ryan for club and country. He stepped it up last year and he has been a dominant force and suddenly, like I say, realising the potential that he always had. And hopefully, after a little dip through the World Cup, he can kick on again uh, in this season. Uh, top four then. And RG Snayman is up into the four position. He is the heir to Ebenezer Best throne as the enforcer for South Africa. He is injured again, which is a shame. Quite a serious injury as well. Hope it's not, not out for too long. 28 years young. The Viking is already a two-time World Cup winner. And he's one of those guys that will be gunning for a third one in four years' time. If he was playing for any other country, you'd imagine he'd be starting or very, very close to starting. In fact, I can only think that It'd only be New Zealand that, that it wouldn't be an automatic start for RG Snayman, which just goes to demonstrate the depth that South Africa have got in their front five in particular is frightening. He is a proper player. Uh, three, Will Skelton. And, you know, like James Ryan, for him, a disappointing Rugby World Cup. He was injured for most of it for, for Australia, wasn't able to lead his country as he would have wanted. He's part of a team which was really poor, um, lacking confidence but I've kept Will Skelton in the number three position because he is one of the most unique rugby players on earth 31 years of age six for eight and what like 140 kegs he's been much heavier than that before over 150 he's been lighter than that as well uh, he is a three-time European champion with two different teams the only man to have done that he's such a unique specimen that and honestly the the size of the man. I've stood next to him and interviewed him. It is mind-boggling how massive this guy is. And he has been getting better and better in recent years. And I'm hoping, because Australia need it, I'm hoping we can see the best of Will Skelton. He wears yellow for La Rochelle, hopefully in the gold for Australia. Into the top two then. Brody Retallick, who is on another sabbatical, I, I, I hope. And I think he will be back to play for New Zealand again. Hence, he's still in this top 10 list. He's still only 32, former World Player of the Year. He was the best player on earth. Go back a few years. He's still a formidable talent. And yeah, Lurch is just a classic enforcer. And if it wasn't for the man who's at number one, he'd comfortably be the best at doing that role in world rugby. But he is living at a time, um, a guy the same age, and but a guy who has overtaken him in recent years to be the best. Ebenezer Beth, no question, the clear, clear, undisputed number one as the tight headlock, the ultimate enforcer in world rugby right now. And he'd be mixing it with Bakis Borta when you look at the great enforcers that have worn uh, that jersey for South Africa. 119 caps to his name, two World Cups, and he can keep going. I think Ebenezer Beth could well be playing for South Africa, or at least in the squad and contributing in four years' time, he, by which time he'll be 36. I think he can definitely do that. Um, obviously, the, the, the workload you get in French rugby is a lot tougher than the players that are playing in Japan, so that may take its toll. We'll watch that one. But Ebenezer Beth, definitely the number one. And that is the top 10. And uh, yeah, let's have a look at that top 10. Ebenezer Beth at the top unchanged with the top three and again I've had to sort of separate the tight headlocks from the loose headlocks so as best I can I've given you a sense of who are the movers up and down RG Snayman flying up Richie Gray and James Ryan taking a little dip Will Rowlands into the top 10 Ollie Chesham as well the same it's um pretty good list that isn't it not too shabby at all I've got to say um we'll be on to the loose headlocks in the next um in the next video it's, it's worth pointing out that the average age 
of those loose heads, of those tight head locks, sorry, is 30.1 years of age. Ollie Chesham at 23 kind of drags that one down a little bit. And some of the players that weren't selected missed the top 10. George Martin for England, I think he will he'll make that list very soon. He looks um, a real talent. And uh, Nicola Canoni for Italy, Grant Gilchrist for Scotland, Jean Klein, uh, Guido Petty for Argentina as well. So you may well think some of those deserve to be in the top 10, in which case tell me in the comments. Give the video a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I will see you on the next one, yeah?